Ladies and gentlemen, it is such an honor for our organization to host America's premier television executive, a man who has utterly transformed Discovery Communications, making it a global company. They control networks throughout the world, not just in the United States. I was personally one of their television hosts on TLC, but from Discovery to TLC to Animal Planet to Military, there's, they're endless. Um, we're so proud of David Zaslav. His incredible dedication to Holocaust memory is unsurpassed, unparalleled, and his love for Ellie Wiesel and for Marion is something he's demonstrated throughout his entire life. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. David Zaslav. Thank you, uh, thank you, Ron Marshall. So, um, this is a special night for me because of the impact that Ellie and Marion have had on my life um, and my wife Pam and our family. But it really started before I even met Marion and Ellie. And uh, it was a blessing um, in life that you get to meet uh, someone you so admire. But it was Marion's work with Ellie. And they were really one. It was an incredible partnership. It was an incredible love. Um, but they worked together. They traveled together. And they and they fit together. Ellie was a teacher, and he had a way with words, and he had a way of motivating people. And he created a narrative, not just here in America, but around the world, a narrative that impacted me in a meaningful way. But it was shaped and it was textured by Marion. But also, as much as Ellie could speak with words, Marion was the one that would touch and do. And you see that in the work that Marion and Ellie have done and continue to do with their foundation in Israel. Uh, it started after Operation Moses. Um, and it's so interesting because a few moments ago, Marion and I were sitting down and getting ready to have dinner. And someone here tonight came over to Marion and said that he has been to the Charitable Foundation areas, seen the, the schools, seen the work of thousands and thousands of people that were impacted. But it was with Marion's hands. I wanted to talk a little bit about Marion that maybe some of you don't know, because she was a renaissance woman. Uh, we don't just admire her for the impact that she had in creating this incredible narrative. And the narrative wasn't just about the Holocaust. This is what most inspired me. It was about this idea of, that was most articulated, really, by the words never again. But no one knew what that meant until Marion and Ellie got together and wrote all of these books books weren't of just about the Holocaust. They were about what Shmuley talked about, Jewish values. You stand up anytime anybody is discriminated against for the color of their skin, or for their religion, or for their beliefs. And we as a Jewish people, we haven't done the best job at that. My family came and said never again. And this is a moment when more than ever we really need that. And there was a true righteous standing up for that belief. And that was Marion and Ellie their whole lives. And there was an issue. They stood. And we have a moment now in history that's really quite unusual. We saw it before, between 1925 and the late 1930s. What's happening around the world that Rabbi Shmuley talked about, this rise of anti-Semitism, is not a surprise. Because for the last 15 years, there's been almost zero GDP growth around the world. And we've had a technological revolution between 25 and 39. We have an industrial revolution. And people are struggling. Wages are down. Unemployment is high in, in all these countries around the world. And this is a moment for Marion and Ellie's message that is most important. Because hate is rising, not just against the Jews and anti-Semitism. It's hate for everyone. And it's a moment for us to get to those values the things that we read about in every book that Marion edited and translated and collaborated. But it's our obligation as a Jewish people to stand up for others. We need to stand up for the immigrants, we need to stand up for the Muslims, we need to, because we always said no one stood up for us. And that's what, that's what the foundation of what Ellie and Marion is about. More than that, 
Marion is not just a survivor, but in the 50s, she, was, she joined the NAACP. And in the 60s, she was marching for civil rights in the South. She was a true leader for her beliefs. She walked the walk and she talked the talk. She was a great humanitarian. She's a great, she's a great mom, grandmother, and I can tell you firsthand, she's an extraordinary friend. And if you have Marion as a friend, you're, you're really lucky. And for me, it was a great gift because through Marion and Ellie, I found my way back. I, I never left my religion, but I was very culturally Jewish. And since meeting Marion and Ellie, I've really spent more time with the religious side of Judaism, and it's brought a lot of joy to my and my family's life. So it is with great joy and, uh, that, I, that I'm here tonight to honor uh, Marion. An extraordinary life. She's not done yet. The impact she has had is amazing. Uh, the books that you, that you edited and collaborated on and helped write still inspire so many people in every school in America and schools around the world. So I'd like to, before we call up Marion, to just call up uh, Alicia, who is carrying on the voice for and with Marion, for his father. Um, I see it, I get a chance to talk to Ellie often, and it's a voice that's dearly needed. When someone said to me the other day, who do we, who around the world can we look to that we all can feel this, is, this person is speaking the truth. This is someone that we can be in a world where there's all this spin. And that voice was Ellie Muzel. And that voice is now going to be filled by Alicia. And is being filled by Alicia. Alicia Muzel.
to whom she turned and waved before leaving her childhood home forever. And we walked among the trees in Gorse, where her family was incarcerated, waiting to be shipped to Auschwitz. And I will tell you this about my mother. My mother fought to never let her identity as a refugee define her in her new life. She refused to think of herself as a victim, and she has always refused to let others think of her that way. This was a victory she would never give to those who tried to oppress her. And when, after World War II, when she had the opportunity to smuggle goods for the Israeli resistance across Europe, she was determined to fight for the creation of the State of Israel. And when she came to the United States, one of the first things she did, as David mentioned, was get an NAACP membership card and march in the South for civil rights. And she got a job, and she had her own apartment, and she chose who she wanted to spend her time with, and she lived the life of a proudly liberated young woman. And when she and my father created Beit Sipora, I saw her not only fight for Israel, but I also saw her fight against the bureaucracy of racism towards the newly arrived Ethiopian Jews, a racism that violated the country's ideals. I saw her determination that the mistakes the United States had made in its treatment of black people should not be repeated, that skin color should not lead to injustice. Azer Konegdo, fighting for Israel by showing Israel, not telling her where she could do better. My mother has fought all her life, and I know she is proud to receive an award named after Sheldon and Mary Adelson, fighters themselves for what they believe in. My mother's passion is very much needed today. I think about the fact that white supremacy in this country in the year 2019 is still a thing, a deadly thing, and that young black men still have cause to fear for their lives at routine traffic stops and that women still suffer harassment in the workplace. And then I think about the Black Lives Matter movement singling out the Jewish state for its scorn, and the Women's March leaders saying that Zionists cannot be feminists. And I feel my mother's anger and her desire to fight ignorance and intolerance on both sides of the political spectrum. I feel the anger and determination. Do you feel yours? I am proud that there is a part of me that comes very much from my father, and I am proud to be his son. That there is a part of me that is very much my mother, fiercely loyal to her friends, ready to fight when slighted, and never afraid to stand up for my soul. I am very proud to be the son of Marion Gazelle. Thank you, Mom, for inspiring me, for inspiring us all. We love you. Thank you, Heather. Ladies and gentlemen, Mary Louisa. As you have all witnessed, the chief and all speakers have gone directly from my husband to my son. And I'm very proud of that. I'm afraid I'm not part of that. I am not a speaker, but I wanted to say that I'm very honored to receive this award. First of all, because I admire greatly what our friends, Sheldon and Mary Adelson have done. You may agree with them or not, but it is clear that they have a devotion to Israel devotion to make Israel work and bloom. And this morning when I woke up, I thought to myself, why am I getting this award? Why am I getting this honor? I have no idea. Could it be because I was smart enough to, to marry my husband when I did? Could it be that I'm simply getting it because I'm Mrs. Ellie then? But then I thought, no, I, it must have a better reason. And I'm very proud of what we did with the Elie Wiesel Foundation, especially what we did in Israel with the Ethiopian children.
And interestingly enough, a young man came up to me tonight and said that he was from Ashkelon and that he often was in the center we have in Ashkelon and that he learned a lot and that he was very, very grateful for what he received. So that made my night. And listening to my son, listening to David Zaslav, my dear friend David, was such a wonderful experience. I thank Shmuli, the rabbi, what do you call yourself? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> Someone knows why Julia. I'm very honored and thank you very much.